Praise the Lord, precious saints. And welcome to another daily prophetic message to start your day. Today we're going to further move on into the book of Revelations to discuss what are the seven judgment trumpets of God according to Revelation 8, Revelation 9, and also finishing off in Revelation 11, where we see the seventh trumpet that is sounded. See, Jesus, when He came the first time, He did not come to bring peace to this world, but rather a sword. Why couldn't He deal with the issues then? Because sin must be judged. He couldn't come to bring peace. Any form of peace outside of God's judgment is a false peace. And that's what the Antichrist will try to bring precious saints. See, there is so much wickedness in this world. I'm telling you that on every level of society, within our governments, within our institutions, within every department, within the police force, the military, you name it. There are Luciferians within there that are working for Satan. They are working to bring about his one world government and his one world economy and his one world religion. So you'll start to see that these seven trumpets are a continuation on from the seven seals that we have discussed. And as we will note from this point also, for those that believe that Jesus is coming for a pre-tribulation rapture, that He has already raptured the church precious saints. Because uh, trumpets in the book of Revelation is declaring a judgment to come. So we can seal the, see that the seals that were released were also judgments coming upon the earth. But now we're moving into an increased judgment through the seven trumpets. Now it's interesting to note that only one third of the earth will be affected in different parts with this judgment. And God is still giving mankind the opportunity opportunity to repent and turn from their ways, precious saints. So here, when we move on to the next teaching of the seven bowls, we will start to see that there is not a percentage of people that will be affected or the earth, rather the whole earth will be affected by God's judgment, still giving people an opportunity to repent, but most will refuse. So this is an opportunity for us to make right before the Lord now, before this judgment comes against the world, precious saints. The Bible says that judgment must come to the house of God first. This is our opportunity, precious saints, to enter into the ark, to forsake our ways, the sinful ways, those little sins that attack the vine as according to uh, Solomon's chapter 2 verse 15. The little foxes that attack the vine. We must be a church that is blameless on that day when he comes to snatch, when he comes to capture and take away his remnant bride that has made themselves ready. Praise the Lord. So we can see that these seven angels are preparing to blow the seven judgments, to blow the seven trumpets that God has assigned for such a time as this. And they go one by one. And what we will notice is that God is still giving people the chance to repent and only inflicts the judgment to a certain percentage of creation, as I've just discussed. And according to Deuteronomy 30 verse 19, I call heaven and earth as witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. 
Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. God has been warning mankind since the beginning, giving us an all an opportunity to repent. And maybe we were ignorant before, but God is calling us all to repentance within this hour, precious saints. So we may be ready for His coming, that we may prepare to enter into the wedding feast of the Lamb of God, precious saints. And we know that according to His Word, He says in Acts 3, verse 14 to 15, But you denied the Holy One, the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life, whom God raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. Now, all those that are left behind during this period of time are those that have received the result of their choices that they made to reject Jesus Christ. And just as Peter came to preach to those people on the day of Pentecost, he came and preached and said, you know what? You rejected Christ. They received the message and they came in droves. There is a time coming that a revival will come to Israel where they will receive the Christ as their Messiah. Hallelujah. And there will be those 144,000 we've discussed. There will be those two witnesses that will also be calling down upon these judges judgments upon the earth at that particular time but there are angels in heaven that God has instructed God's angels that take heed to God's words spoken by his ministers hallelujah they are ministers of flame praise the Lord God is going to bring judgment to this world because sin must be judged precious saints, especially those that have unconfessed sins. There are those in this world that are so wicked. They do wicked things against children. They do wicked things against against all sorts of people in today's society. And because they refuse to repent, God still gives them an opportunity, but judgment must come to be judged according to His Word. Somebody say Amen. So what's also important that we must know that the church has already been raptured. The church has been raptured and will not endure these tribulations that are coming upon the world at this particular time, precious saints. Praise the Lord. So for us to see the seven trumpets, we need to read the seventh seal, which releases them. So according to Revelation 8 verse 1, it says, When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stood before God and to whom were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar, and he was given much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne, and the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God, and from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer filled it with fire from the altar and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. So the seven angels who had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. So now these trumpets are released one at a time. And they are all indefinite except for the fifth judgment, which lasts for only five months, according to Revelation 9.10. So the first four announcements are the divine destruction of Earth's ecology. So it comes to affect the world, the nature and so forth. And also we'll see that the final three involved judgments are the demonic uh, devastation of earth's inhabitants all those that refuse christ all those that need to be judged for their sin will be affected also giving them an opportunity to repent 
but many choose not to repent. So the first four judgments remind us of the plagues of Egypt and they will look very similar. And then we go on and then God, just as God delivered the Israelites from the slavery, so God gives people an opportunity to repent, but people choose not to. It's as though their hearts have been hardened just as it was with Pharaoh. So let us go now to the first trumpet. So according to the Word of God, we see the first trumpet comes against the vegetation. The vegetation of the earth is struck. So according to Revelation 8 verse 7, it says the first angel sounded and hail and fire followed mingled with blood and they were thrown to the earth and a third of the trees was burnt up and all green grass was burned up. So some say that this could be a volcanic situation. Some say this could be a meteorol that could have come and fell from space. It's going to cause such a loss of vegetation. It's going to cause such a loss of crops, a loss of the ecosystem. There will be starving animals. This will also affect people. This will also affect the food supply. This will also bring about droughts upon the earth at this particular time, precious saints. So when that first trumpet is blown, it will continue on until God has finished with its purpose in it in His time. And according to the second trumpet, let's move on. We see that the seas are struck. So you can imagine if there was a cargo ship in that sea. This will also affect every boat and every person that is in the oceans at that particular time. And according to Revelation 8 verses 8 to 9, it says, Then the second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was thrown into the sea, and a third of the sea became blood. And also a third of the living creatures in the sea died and a third of the ships were destroyed. So here we see a meteorite has come, some would say, has affected this. It's killing the animal life in the sea. It's affecting the trade that will be affected because there won't be cargo ships traveling from here there to bring about trade to different nations at that particular time. If it's affecting the ocean, then you would imagine also that it would affect in some way tidal waves to all the coastal areas of places. Now, for those that remember the tsunami around 2005, it really affected many parts of Asia, many parts of the Maldives and different islands and even all the way to African coastline also. This this tidal wave, this tsunami that came affected many things and so will this also cause an effect that would come against all those things and even the sea will become blood. Now some say this could be the blood of the creatures from the ocean and those that were affected. This could be the blood, it could be real blood, it could be just a colour caused because of the meteorites. Uh, but it will turn this red colour and affect every living creature in the oceans. Then we go on and we move to the third trumpet and we see that the waters are struck. This is not just the oceans, but this is now the drinking water. This is now the rivers, the streams, the dams, the wells, everywhere there is water it shall be affected. And according to the Word of God, it says in Revelation 8 verses 10 to 11, it says, Then the third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on the third of the rivers and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood. A third of the waters became Wormwood and many men died from the water because it was made 
bitter. Now, anyone that understands wormwood will know that it's generally used to make alcohol. Therefore, maybe when people drink it, it will also affect them to be intoxicated, to ultimately poison those people uh, or poison. It will be poisonous. No one will be able to touch it. So it will affect. So there will be people that will have water and then there will be people wherever they try to do this water, it will also also turn to this color and it will affect those that want to have this water. So drinking water is affected and no matter what the people do when they drink it, it will be poisoned. It will be not good. You know, some people and countries even refuse wormwood to be brought into their country because it is so, it is so uh, toxic that it can affect People can affect the water supplies and so forth. So it's going to be something that will bring about God's judgment upon the people and it will affect one third of the people at that particular time. So imagine this, uh, imagine the Lord warned Israel through the prophet, prophet Jeremiah of judgment that would come when the people continue to worship idols. According to Jeremiah 9.15, it says, Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will feed them, this people with wormwood, and give them water of gale to drink. So God knew that this, this fallen star, this meteorite that is going to come, that's going to uh, affect the waters affect the waters at that particular time with wormwood and affect them will affect the animals and it will also affect people not being able to drink this particular water so it will affect everything at that particular time now we go on to the fourth trumpet and we see that the heavens are struck according to revelation 8 verse 12 it says then the fourth angel sounded and a third of the sun was struck, and a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened, and a third of them did not shine, and likewise the night. So we do not have light, and if we don't have light, we don't have enough heat from the sun, which will cause very cold temperatures to come upon the earth at that particular time, affecting places more than likely that is not common for them to be cold at that particular time. You can just only imagine through the animated pictures and movies that I'm showing you just gives you an indication of what is going to take place and how it will affect many at that particular time. So it will affect the weather. You know, imagine the moon and different things. It also affects tides of waters and so forth. So we've got that continual issue with the waters. And we've also got issues now uh, with the tide of the waters and so forth. And everything is now starting to be affected, which is similar to the first four, which is similar to the Egypt plagues where God had delivered His people from. Remember, God will always deliver His people and make a way of escape for them. But He also brings judgment. He loves those that He's judged. He's still trying to call out to people to repent of their sins and come to Him. So according to the Word of God, we go on and see in Revelation 8 verse 13, And I looked and I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who are about to sound. Now it is interesting that the inhabitants indicate to reside, to be housed permanently. So these people had decided to settle for this world and to reject Christ. The people of God, however, which is us, which we are the saints, we know that this world is not considered our home, but we are strangers. We are pilgrims passing through this earth, knowing that our home is in heaven with Him, that we may also escape the judgment to come precious saints. God wants us to escape 
what is to come. He wants us to keep our focus on Him. According to Colossians 3 verse 2, it says, Set your mind on the things above, not on the things of this earth. Keep your eyes on the things above, not on the lust of the flesh, the pride of the life, and you know um, the lust of the eyes. All those things that are trapping to each and every one of us, precious saints. You know, even Jesus warned us. He says, yes, temptation will come, but woe to the person that temptation stays with. So it's going to come to each person. It's going to come, but we're going to reject it, run from it, repent of it, and get our eyes back on Jesus Christ. What about Hebrews 11 verse 13? It says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off were assured of them, embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. And according to Philippians 3 verse 20 onwards, for our citizenship is in heaven from which we also eagerly await for the Saviour of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to His glorious body according to the working by which He is able even to subdue all things to Himself. There is going to be a transformation in the twinkling of an eye when you are captured away, when you are raptured, you will be transformed into your glorious body body, precious saints. Hallelujah. And that's why we've got to keep our eyes on heaven. We've got to keep our eyes on the things above. We are got to never forget we are just strangers. We are pilgrims passing through this earth. And those that have kept their eyes on the earthly things, they're the ones that are going to pass through these judgments and the woe judgments is now coming against every living inhabitant upon the earth precious saints it's time for the people to repent it's time still an opportunity for them to repent and why are we saying this to you why am i telling you because you have loved ones you have friends that you know that may pass through this and it is an opportunity for us to warn them of what's about to come, that they may repent, that they may prepare also and come in. Remember the Bible says that the first shall be last and the last shall be first. There'll be some that will enter in right at the last minute and receive the same wages. Isn't that, it may not sound fair to us, but it is a joyful thing that those that have become wise, because the Bible says a wise person wins souls. A wise person wins souls, precious saints. That's what they do. So we see an angel came from heaven, started to declare that the three woes that are going to come. So we're now up to the fifth seal, the fifth trumpet. The fifth trumpet is the locust from the bottomless Hit. And according to the Word of God, it says in Revelation 9, Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to the earth. To him was given the key to the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and smoke arose out of the pit like the smoke of the great furnace. So the sun and the air were darkened because of the smoke of the pit. Then out of the smoke locusts came upon the earth and to them was given power as the scorpions of the earth have power and they were commanded not to harm the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree, but those whose men who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads and they were not given authority to kill them, but to torment them for five months. Their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. In those days, men will seek death and will not be able to find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. The shape of the locusts was like horses prepared for battle and their heads were crowns of something like 
gold and their faces were like the faces of men and they had hair like woman's hair and their teeth were like lions and they were had breastplates of iron and the sound of their wings was like the sound of chariots with many horses running into battle they had tails like scorpions and they were stings in their tails their power was to hurt men for five months and they had as king over them the angel of the bottomless pit whose name in hebrew is abaddon but in greek he has the name apollyon one woe is past behold still two more woes to come after these things see we've got to understand that when god starts to emphasize something he says it three times in revelation it says god is holy 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 we know when he says it's three it's an extreme level so when he says woe 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 it means that there is an increase of judgment that is coming upon the earth where god himself releases releases those demonic forces the bible says that these demonic forces have been kept aside for such a time of judgment as according to second peter 2 verses 4 to 6 for if God did not spare the angels who sin, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment. They have been reserved to bring about this judgment of the fifth trumpet to come out and these demonic forces will come out into the appearance of as they have been described because demons need to take on the form of something in this case according to God's exact word they will come in the likeness of these grasshopper scorpion and all wicked looking creature as you've seen according to the visual animated visual of these particular things and imagine Jesus delivered a man who was possessed of a legion that's over 5,000 demons in this man and the demons inside of him begged Jesus that they would not be sent to the abyss because that's where they belonged but Jesus taking heed to them did not cast them to the abyss but rather cast them into the swine and the swine violently ran over the cliff into the water precious saints we can see that these demonic spirits have been reserved for a day of judgment for this very task but imagine Jesus has given us authority over demonic forces now but in this particular time people will not be able to have authority over the demonic forces because they will attack those people that have received the mark of the beast precious saints there will be people here that will receive it those that are sealed with on their forehead that they are gods will not be touched those that are serving him in this particular period time will not be touched but everyone else according to this will be affected by this woe so we can see here that according to the word of God it says in Luke 8 31 and they begged him that he would not command them to go out into the abyss so as believers in Christ he's given us that power over the enemy to use now precious saints but it's we should not be so uh, joyful just over the authority but rather that our names are written in the book of life because if he can say get away from me I did not know you but Lord Lord I cast out demons demons in your name I prophesied in your name I preached in your name and he will say to them get away from me because I do not know you see it is more about that our names are written in the book of life that we are living for Jesus that we are becoming into his image that our garments are clean precious saints it's more important than just the anointing or just how anointed a person is rather it is all about Jesus Christ that's why Paul says I do not come to boast of anything else other than Christ him crucified and 
That is what we must do. We must also preach Him and Him crucified so that we can also see that resurrection power, not to be overtaken by that in pride, but rather use it just for the sake of preparing people for the coming of the rapture of the church of Jesus Christ. Because what does the Bible say? According to Luke 10 verses 17 to 20, Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us through your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I have given you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven, precious saints. That is the most vital thing that we can see here. So Jesus tells us, all also according to this, of the one who comes with the key, who's been given the keys for the bottomless of pit, and that is Satan himself. It's also described here, so these demonic forces are unleashed upon the earth as judgment on an unbelieving world. And there is no protection from the terrible torment they bring except to those that wear the seal of God on their foreheads and people will prefer death but no one will be able to die. Imagine that. They will want death, but they will not be able to have death. They will not be able to. They will have to endure the five months of all this pain that will come upon them, which will probably be sores on their body. However, the effects of that sting, it will be ridiculously painful in every way, precious saints. But we know that God has a plan. He has a plan. He has a plan to bring about his purpose so people will prefer death but they won't have it so according to here we see Abaddon Apollyon in Greek which means destroyer we can see that this is Satan himself because according to John 10 10 the thief who is Satan comes to kill steal and destroy let us never forget Satan is not our friend Those people that serve Lucifer will have to pay in the end, will have to cash in on that day. It's like a credit card. Maybe you like to buy things until you have to pay for it. A lot of people like to use a credit card because you can buy things and tab it up until you have to pay for that thing. And the Bible says that the wages of our sin lead to death, precious saints. Everyone's going to have their payday. But when we are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ, we are given a new credit and we are bought out of debt cancellation because He comes to cover us with His precious blood and we start afresh. That's why we choose to live for Christ and Him alone. So see, our only hope that we have is within Christ Himself. We cannot be no match for Satan by ourselves, precious saints. But Christ, the hope of glory that lives within us is more powerful. The Bible says, according to 1 John 4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them because He who is in you is greater than he that's in the world. You have authority over Satan now, but you must also be sober-minded because he roams around waiting to devour us, waiting to catch us. So we must know that God's grace is sufficient and He's promised to make a way of escape for you so that you will not even have to pass through this judgment that is yet to come, precious saints. Because remember, our mission is to make heaven and to escape all these judgments as according to this promise in Romans 5 verse 9, it says much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. Hallelujah. We shall be saved from the wrath to come. We shall be saved from the wrath to come because of the blood of Jesus Christ, because we choose Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. That's what we want to preach. We want to preach Christ and Him crucified. Hallelujah. So we now move on to the sixth trumpet, which is talking about the angels from Ephrates. So when this, according to the Word of God, it says in verse uh, 13, It says, Then the sixth angel sounded, 
and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. Our army of the horsemen was 200 million and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. Those who sat on them had breastplates of fiery red. And they had uh, hikanath blue and sulfur yellow. And the heads of the horses were like the heads of lions. And out of their mouths came fire, smoke and brimstone. And by these three plagues of a third of mankind was killed by the fire and the smoke and the brimstone which came out of their mouths for their power is in their mouth and in their tails for their tails are like serpents having heads and with them they do harm but the rest of mankind who were not killed by these plagues did not repent of the works of their hands and they should not worship demons and they still didn't repent or of the idols of gold and silver brass stone and wood which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murderers or their sorceries or their sexual immorality or even their thefts. Precious saints, they refused to repent. They were still given an opportunity. Imagine one third of mankind is affected by this particular uh, woe that has come upon the earth. But that... that um, the rest of creation that is still there, which is two third that is left, they refuse to repent. They refuse to repent. So let's look at the river Euphrates, originally flowed from the Garden of Eden, where evil entered the world according to Genesis 2 verse 10 and Genesis 2 verse 14. So now a deadly army of 200 million is released to kill one third of mankind through the plagues of their warfare. And those who were killed did not even repent of their sinful deeds. Those that died and those that were left behind. And according to the Word of God, it says in Psalm 119 verse 155, it says, Salvation is far from the wicked, for they do not seek your statutes. Precious saints, it is time for us to serve God. There are some people that are so hardened to the Gospel that it is such an offence to them, but it doesn't stop us from reaching out to anyone because I'm telling you, precious saints, you've never locked eyes with another human being that God does not love. Maybe we may not love them. Maybe they may seem unlovable, but to God, He loves His creation. And that is why He sent His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have eternal life. He wants everyone to escape what is yet to come. We know that hell was not created for you and me, but for the devil and all of his fallen angels. But, and he doesn't delight in the death of the wicked, but calls all men to repent. He is giving an opportunity for mankind to repent, but they refuse to repent of their fornications, of their idolatry, of all their, 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 their thefts and so forth of what they're doing. It's time for us to repent and prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, that even our loved ones will not pass through this. Or for those that are not raptured, that they may remember the words that you spoke to them when you warned them of what was to come. Because this will be a reality, precious saints. Everything that we're seeing around us is starting to build momentum. It's starting to build momentum. It's leading towards these days that are ahead of us, precious saints. And it's time for us to serve God. So then we go on to the seventh trumpet and we see that chapter 10, there is a gap. Not until chapter 11 from verse 15, we see that then the seventh angel sounded 
And there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ, and we shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their throne fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come because you have taken your great power and reigned. The nations were angry and your wrath has come and the time of the dead that they should be judged and that you should reward your servants, the prophets and the saints of those who fear your name shall be small and great and should destroy those who destroy the earth. Then the temple of God was open in heaven and the ark of his covenant was seen in his temple and there were lightnings, noises, thunderings, earthquake and great hail, precious saints. Oh, praise the Lord. So the kingdom of this world have been angry and have plotted against God. Now it is time for God's wrath to bring their deeds to an end, precious saints. Even the hardness of hearts towards men, still towards God, is trying to think that they were they're great enough to come against God, but they will never be great enough to come against God. We know that in this hour, it is time for us to prepare our families. Why am I telling you these things? Are you scared? Well, you should be scared. You be, should be scared. The only thing that we should fear is God. God and Him alone, precious saints. And we don't want to be left behind. We don't want to enter into hell. We don't want to enter. That shouldn't be our portion. But our portion shall be that we will enter into the wedding feast of the Lamb of God. This is not a time to compromise and bow down to the Baal, this world system today. You know, even Elijah thought he was the only prophet. But then God said to him, No, there, is there are those 7,000 that have not bowed down to Baal, have not bowed down to this world system. I believe that there is a remnant body of Christ out there, those that don't want to bow down to this world system. They're not here for the long term. They're just passing through. They're just pilgrims. They're just strangers in this earth. We know that our home is not here, precious saints. We choose not to make this our home, but we choose to be pilgrims. We choose to be citizens of heaven, that we are just passing through. It's not our best life now, but our life is best to come with God and Jesus Christ. And it is by His grace that we will escape the wrath to come, precious saints. He loves you very much. He never intended any of your loved ones to enter through this tribulation, through these seven trumpet judgments, precious saints. It's time for us to prepare for His coming. Get ready as I also bring about the seven bold judgments. But until then, precious saints, what are you doing today? He is coming back soon. It is time to get onto the ark. It's time to prepare your household. It's time to prepare in this hour. It's not a time to do anything else. We know the signs are here. We know everything happening around us right now. It is time for us to prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is coming to rapture His pure bride, precious saints. It's time for us to prepare. Maybe you're here today and you want to give your life to Christ. Maybe you know that there are certain things in your life are not going too well. I want to give you that opportunity to get right with God today, that we may make our hearts right before Him. If there's anybody that's offended you, just choose to forgive them today. Choose to forgive them today and release them back to God. And if possible, go and make right with them. And for those that you need to bring about peace, then do so. But if not, release that person, release them back to God, that God may deal with their hearts also. So Heavenly Father, I thank you for each person that's listening, for those that desire to give their lives to Christ and make it right with Him today. I want to give you that opportunity now. I want you to repeat the words after me. I want you to say, Heavenly Father, today I repent of all of my sins. Since the day of my birth, forgive me, Father. Forgive me. 
Today, Father, I receive Your Son, Jesus Christ, as my Lord, as my God, and as my personal Saviour. And from today, I am born again. I'm a new creation. The old things have passed away. Send Your Holy Spirit to heal me, to deliver me, to guide me, and to lead me. In Jesus' name, I pray and believe. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, then I encourage you to press into God. Press in and join all of our fastings, especially August, September. It is a rapture alert time. It's rapture alert. It's time to be ready. It's time to be get ready for takeoff. You know, you know that when someone says, hey, um, I've got a flight booked, but you just got to pack your bags and get ready. You don't know when the flight's going to be, but you're going to have to have your bags packed, ready to go whenever you're on call to come. That's what we're, we're in that hour right now. We're in that hour right now where the constant warnings, the constant be prepared, be prepared, be prepared. Live for Him today. Don't, don't stop living for Him. Live for Him, but live for Christ. You know, get your priorities right change your direction. You know, there's not much time to go. I'm telling you, He is coming back soon, precious saints, and we must be ready. So Heavenly Father, I thank You for each person. I pray, Lord, that You will touch them. You will guide them. You will give them the grace to know what to do. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are there to guide them as you, as they call upon you. Reveal to them the things that they need to change in their lives, to remove from their lives, relationships that they need to remove from their lives. Whatever could leave them left behind, Lord, I pray that you would start to help them and guide them and to lead them in this end time hour as we are on high alert for being rapture ready, that we may prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come and touch them. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. This is Pastor Robert Clancy from Narrow Path Ministries in Perth, Western Australia. It is time to catch the fire of repentance revival as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom, shalom, shalom. And don't forget, you can subscribe to the YouTube channel while it's still up there. And I encourage you to also follow us on Facebook on our official page or Instagram. You can go there, click on the links in the description box. And we also, uh, you can go to our free website, repentancerevival.com. Don't forget, we've got the up and coming August three days fasting that comes up on the 20th, 21st and 22nd. And then we're going to have the 10 days of all repentance and we're going to come and line it up with the Jewish feast, the Feast of Trumpets. And also we're going into the Day of Atonement in that period of time. That's that the 10 days of all is a time of repentance, a time of staying close to the Lord. You know, there are, there, there are feast days that still need to be fulfilled. And I believe that God can do anything He chooses. No one knows the day or the hour, but we are in a season right now. We are in a season that God is changing the environment. He's preparing us telling us to be prepared be prepared these are the t these are the times to join in the fasting to press into God spend time with him reading his word daily and and to remove those things from your life ask the holy spirit to help you who was sent to lead us into all righteousness so from my family to yours god bless you we love you we are praying for your precious saints shalom shalom shalom